Hi guys, Mr. Anderson here for Science Lab 7, and today we're going to be talking about the Earth. We're actually going to be talking about the basic structure of the Earth. So what are the layers of the Earth, right? So we're going to start in the very center of the Earth. We call that the inner core. Now the inner core is solid. It's thought to be solid and made up of mostly iron, kind of an iron-nickel mix. That's the idea. Uh, and as we travel further out, Right? Then we get to the liquid outer core. So we had solid inner core and a liquid outer core. Now, again, the liquid outer core is also thought to be made up of mostly iron, but kind of an iron-nickel mix. And as we travel further out, right, we get to the mantle. Now, the mantle, this is the largest layer of the Earth. In, in the mantle, there's lots of things like silicon and oxygen and magnesium and iron. And really, it's divided into an upper mantle and a lower mantle. Uh, remember, the asthenosphere, or asthenosphere, is a part of the mantle. And this is a weak layer of rock that can flow slowly. And you have those convection currents, the transfer of heat in the mantle that's thought to be the force behind plate movement. Now, as we go further out, beyond the mantle is what we call the crust. Now, the crust, this is the outer layer of the Earth. Uh, and, and some places it's relatively thin, it's as thin as 5 kilometers. Other places, like where there's mountains, it's relatively thick, as thick as 60 kilometers. In the, in the mantle, there's uh, sort of less dense stuff. There's things like silicon, lots of silicon, lots of aluminum. Uh, there's not a lot of iron and magnesium because those are more dense things. And again, stuff that's more dense tends to sink. Stuff that's less dense tends to float. Uh, and of course, of course, the crust is less dense stuff, less dense than the mantle. That's why it's floating on top of the mantle. And that's pretty neat. Now, as far as mapping the Earth's internal structure, like how do we know that that's what the inside of the Earth looks like. Nobody's ever been there. It's far too hostile an environment. Nobody can really survive down there. Too much heat, too much pressure. So how do we know what we know about the inside of the Earth? Well, <clears throat> as it turns out, it's due to earthquakes. Earthquakes! Oh my goodness! Right? So earthquakes tell us information about the inside of the Earth. Right? By looking at the speeds and paths of seismic waves and how they change as they move through different materials, we get an idea of what it is actually underneath the crust, which is pretty neat. Uh, as it turns out, the deeper you go, the more dense it is, the more packed together that material is. There's greater pressure down there. And, and so as we look at the inside of the Earth, look at the internal structure of the Earth, uh, when there's an earthquake, seismic waves are released, right? P waves and S waves and L waves. P waves and F to S waves start traveling through the interior of the Earth. Remember, L waves, surface waves, just kind of go along the outside. But P waves and S waves start traveling through the interior of the Earth. And what happens is, if the Earth was just sort of one material, and, and those waves would just travel all the way through and would never stop until they hit the other side, and we could record them from the other side, which is pretty cool. But what happens is, some of those waves stop. Right? Some of those waves stop. They don't travel all the way through the inside of the Earth. Something stops them. Okay? P waves do travel through pretty much anything. P waves go all the way through the Earth. But S waves stop. S waves can travel through solids only. And so when they hit that liquid outer core, they stop. They get absorbed. And so that gives us a picture as to what's there. Okay? So there are some places on Earth that don't receive seismic waves from an earthquake. So there's an earthquake. <laughs> earthquake, oh no! Waves get released. Some of those waves are going to get absorbed by that liquid outer core. And so there are places on Earth that will, just won't feel those, those S waves. Those places that don't receive seismic waves, we call those shadow zones. Shadow zones, yeah. Shadow zones. These are areas of the Earth that don't receive seismic waves from an earthquake. Okay, from that quake there will be certain shadow zones. Again, P waves, they're slowed down, they're bent when they go from one, kind, one layer to another kind of layer. So when they go from the liquid outer core and to the solid inner core, they're going to change speeds. S waves, again, cannot travel through liquids. They travel through solids only, so they travel through the mantle only. Now, also one of the neat things is, is by looking at how those seismic waves travel, we find uh, that there's a difference right, between the crust and the mantle. That layer, that boundary line between the crust and the upper mantle has a special name. It's called the Mohorovicic discontinuity. That's, that's a fun one to say, right? Mohorovicic discontinuity. That's the boundary line between the crust and the upper part of the mantle. All right, so we've talked about several things today as far as the Earth's structure, right? It has a solid inner core and a liquid outer core. There's a thick mantle, right? And there's a crust. 
the speeds and paths of seismic waves as they change when they go through these different layers, they help us to see what's inside the Earth, right? Remember the boundary line between the crust and the upper mantle, it's called the Mohorovicic discontinuity. I hope you've learned a lot about the inside of the Earth today. This is Mr. Anderson signing off for Science Lab 7 saying, hey, stay curious.